you follow this recipe, you'll have a beautiful crown roast, fit for a king. We start with our full loin for our crown roast. Now I have a really good butcher friend who you may have seen in some of my videos who got this for me. He got me the full loin here as opposed to two shorter loins. If you get two shorter loins, those are perfectly acceptable. The process of turning it into a crown will be slightly different and you'll use some butcher's twine and a needle to tie those together. For this case, I don't have to do any of that. I'll just be tying this all together in one big crown like that. Our butcher took care of two other things for us. He cut some lines through the bone right here, which is gonna allow our roast to bend as we form it into the crown. If you get this hole, make sure they cut through that. Otherwise, you will not be able to form the crown. He also took the rib bones and Frenched them. In this case, what that means is taking the meat and the fat and cutting that out from in between the bones. These are then going to form our crown once we are all wrapped up. As with any roast, we let this sit out at room temperature for about 45 minutes. That's gonna bring that temperature up a little bit so we don't shock the meat when it finally gets on the grill. And before we go on the grill, we need to season it up and prepare it. First thing I'm gonna do is pat it dry with some paper towel so that our seasoning will adhere a lot better. And now you don't need to go crazy, but just pull some of that extra water moisture off because that will hinder the smoke absorption once we get on the grill. It's also going to hinder our seasoning from adhering to the meat as well. If you don't get a full loin like this, you will get two sections like this. And you can tie those together very easily with a needle and some butcher's twine to create your crown. Some people actually prefer that because then the bones will dictate where you're cutting once the roast is cooked. So you get those nice even chops. I prefer the full loin if you can get it from your butcher. That way you get different parts of the loin, so you get different cuts, and that can kind of be a preferential thing that a lot of people like. Whereas right down here you get the bone-in pork chop that a lot of us are used to. But then down here you get that porterhouse kind of chop with the tenderloin attached in that wider bone. For this recipe, we're gonna be using our buried treasure truffle butter. This is a really unique blend of butter flavors, of course those earthy truffle flavors, as well as salt, pepper, and a little bit of thyme to round out a beautiful flavor profile for our crown roast. So I'm gonna season the underside first, and I'm gonna season pretty generously. There's a lot of meat here, so don't be shy with how much seasoning you use. And then once it's all wrapped up and tied up and beautiful crown shaped, we're gonna do a little more seasoning as well just to make sure we got all of our bases covered. Flip her over and get the other side. And now it's time to tie up our roast. So first I'm going to gently kind of form our roast here, just like that. And you can see the crown come together. So I'm going to tuck in the edges. You can see the crown form there. So all I got to do is get the butcher's twine and tie it up. So what I like to do is I like to kind of measure a piece, give myself some slack so I have some room to tie, and I'll cut that. There we are. Form the crown, our basic knot, tighten it. Do one up by the ribs to keep that crown up like that. Kind of hook it under the, the rib bones on the end. Two done, and then I'll try and get one further down on the loin. Crown roast. So I'm gonna touch up the seasoning a little bit because with my gloves working in there, it took a little bit off. And then we're gonna let this rest to let that seasoning really adhere before we go on the grill. And that's also gonna give us time to make our mushroom stuffing, which we're gonna put right in the center of that crown. And for our stuffing, I'm gonna be making a pretty basic mushroom stuffing with some stock, mushroom, onions, a little bit of fresh thyme. And this process will be included in the recipe notes as well. Adding the hot chicken stock to the stuffing, we'll give it a quick stir and then we'll go into the roast. 
You want to fold here. You don't want to crush that bread down to squish it. Now we're going to fill the roast with our stuffing. We're going to start with smaller handfuls so we can get it all the way down to the bottom. You want to fill the whole roast and we're going to mound it over the top for that beautiful crowned look. And now we're ready for the smoker. I've got our big green egg preheated to 350 degrees. And we're going to throw this on. One of the most important things we need to do before going on the smoker is making sure we can monitor the temperature of both our smokehouse and our roast. I'm going to use a Bluetooth monitor so that I can monitor this from inside. And I'm going to press this down into the thickest part of our roast and we're ready for the smoker. I have the spacer in here set up so that we don't have direct heat on our roast. We're looking for more of an ambient heat with this. I've got our Bluetooth monitor set up, so all I have to do now is get our cook set up in the app. We had our crown roast on the smoker for about two hours and 45 minutes until it hit an internal temperature of 138 degrees. I like keeping it just under 140 and then I pulled it and I let it rest for about a half an hour and now we're ready to slice. Resting a roast is so crucial to bring those juices back into the fold so you don't lose them when you slice. And now there's nothing left to do but cut her open and see how we did. It smells super smoky and delicious. So what we're gonna do to cut this is we're gonna find those bones and we're just gonna cut down slices right in between them. And it looks beautifully pink still. Looks like we got a nice smoke ring. And that looks incredible. Beautiful smoke ring. That's just tons of flavor right there. It's not overdone. You can see how juicy it is still. And you can see, like, it's just super tender. So let's see what we got. That, my friends, is some of the juiciest, most delicious pork I've ever had, honestly. Not to toot my own horn, but this turned out beautifully. A nice big crown roast, not too hard to do. It's just you need the space and the time to do it. And the local butchers always help. This paired with our mushroom stuffing here, I'm ready to feed about 20 people and I've got some hungry coworkers who are gonna be very happy to see this. I think the key to this recipe was a good seasoning and monitoring the temperature of the roast. I do hope that you get to try this for you and your family and let us know what you think. If you like this recipe, check us out at psseasoning.com for all the details. And if you like it a lot, click the subscribe button. And until next time, I'm Chef Jed. Thanks for watching.